what is your issue? Me? No, my pup, my the, the my puppy right here keeps putting their paw up on my. Uh... What's up? Okay? I can do it for you. For real? I can do it for you. Hello, housekeeping. Okay. <laughs> you want a treat? You want a treat, don't you? I'm still here. I'm gonna get her a treat real quick. I'm still here. Oh, I got a I got a treat for you, Connor. Actually, you don't want. It was that in a Scooby snack. <laughs> Loki, I could see you and me being Shaggy and Scooby. I'll second that. Ruh, ruh, raggy. Oh. Ruh, ruh, raggy. Ruh, ruh, raggy. <laughs> <laughs>Hi, Connor, what you got for us? Okay, let me show you this video. Tell me what you think of my NFL starting quarterback who is possibly going to win MVP this season. Oh, my God. <laughs> you stop. Two weeks in, this is what we're doing. What did he say? <laughs> so he got fined $14,000 oh, yeah. <laughs> for doing this. <laughs> Any, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? You because been I'm back. You been back. Hit by a smooth mm, 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 back. Uh. Ooh, <laughs> cause this is thriller. No, stop. No, stop. Stop. I don't really care for that song. I used to be terrified of that music video when my dad used to play it for me. Anyways, he got fined fourteen thousand dollars for that. What? It just got. We'll try. It. So that video, real quick. That video just hit the like eight billion mark or a billion mark on uh, uh, YouTube now. Anyway, go ahead. He got fined fourteen thousand dollars for that. I think it's ridiculous, but I'm interested to see what your take is on it. Why did he get fined fourteen thousand dollars for doing the Michael Jackson dance imitation? Is it because he imitated Michael Jackson? Is it because of his hand placement? Um, I think it's stupid. If you're going to find him, find the gritty. But, Bruce, go ahead. I, I, I can, I'll jump on this first real quick. Oh, uh, I bet you will. Because Bruce was actually alive when Michael Jackson was relevant. I know. True. Right? Not wrong. I actually have – and I'm not even kidding. I actually have the Thriller album on vinyl upstairs. And I'm not even joking about fire, that. Fire, Bruce. Fire. Huh? What do you say? He said that's fire. That's fire. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and no, no joke, the only reason why he got fined for it is because he grabbed his dick. That's the only reason why. He grabbed his dick and twisted it. No, uh, that's the only reason why he ended up getting fined. Um, shout out real quick. So, I'm going to actually, I'm going to end that point, that question right there. But I'm going to do a shout out to Connor and the New Orleans Saints. Because the New Orleans Saints have been balling out. MJ, I don't know if you had the chance to see it. I uh, made a quick appearance this past Tuesday on the breakdown with Nate Ness and uh, Connor Davis. And uh, all I said was uh, the next three games for the saints will be telling about how their season is going to uh, going to be. And uh, once again, Connor, I, I forgot though. I forgot those three teams uh, off the top of my head. The chiefs. The Philly. Rams. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Falcons. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Chiefs. Chief, yeah. So chiefs, uh, Philly and Falcons. So uh, there's going to be a lot of telling things that happen uh, the next three weeks for your beloved uh, Saints aren't going to be marching in no longer. And Derek Carr is not going to be grabbing his crotch because he's dancing. He's going to be grabbing it because it's itching when they uh, whoop his ass. Whoa, when the Saints go marching in. Oh, when the Saints go marching in. I want to be in that number. Oh my God, Sai! Oh, Sai, you can pull this. In, in. <laughs> That's why he's a goat. What in the Alabama? Oh my gosh, I don't care about what the Saints have done through two weeks. You know the amount of teams who have started two and zero and then suck. Plenty. I don't know what the number is. I'm not, I'm not a genius, but I couldn't care less. They beat the Cowboys. The Cowboys suck. Who'd they beat week one? The Panthers. Oh, so they wow. beat the teams who suck. 
Congratulations. Baby boy. Baby boy. The you Bears the, the freaking Titans without scoring an offensive touchdown. You get wins in this league that don't mean anything. So Yeah, but when you're when your two weeks are very historic and the only two teams that have come close to the scoring total you scored in the past two weeks are both Super Bowl winners. The output, out, the output, the output for the offensive production has been elites, but we're not. This is not a homer show. What you, what you got, Cy? Oh, he's muted. Come you're muted. We can't hear you. MJ muted himself. He muted that mic, so we can't hear you. Get your ass out of here. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? You've been hit by. Anyways, is the impress is is the start impressive, Connor? Yes. Or you getting forty points back back weeks? That's cool. That's great. But I'm with you guys on the fact that this next three weeks they're actually playing real competition. If if they can win and at least make the games, if they can like, if they can continue this, which we'll call it, but this this wave of emotion, yeah, they'll be legit. But if the Chiefs blow them out by twenty plus points, same with the Eagles, then it's like okay, Luke starts. As NJ alluded to, a lot of teams start out two zero and can suck. So I do like what I'm seeing. Derek, Derek Carr has shown that this offense is great. At least Fulaga is a beautiful addition to the offensive line. Fucking Shahid, why is he legit, Connor? I would love Shahid's to know. Balling. Shahid's balling. Bro is arguably better than Chris Olave. That's saying something. He's our wide receiver one right now. He's yes. crazy. Rashid Shahid is him. Alvin Kamara, remember how to play football. Like, the team is good. They have the good pieces to – welcome back. <laughs> they have they have the good pieces to – We'll see. Oh, we'll do it. Continue your thought. It's all good. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I will say though, Kamara always knew how to play football. He just was out for like the majority of last season. He had injuries. Yeah. Injuries. He got suspended. Yeah, I mean, it hadn't looked good for him the past couple years. But I wasn't trying to turn that into a Saints segment. I just wanted to see Derek Carr do a little Michael Jackson. Fine, fourteen thousand for that. That's fine. Okay. We, we can learn more. All right, all right. Sorry, I'm done. Man, I love I love Sunday football now. It makes my Saturday so much better. What? Okay, let's play a game. So I made a little graphic earlier. While y'all were doing something. I made a graphic. I made a little graphic. It's not anything too big, but I want to play a little game to introduce. <laughs> it never has been added. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. It's a Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Some may right. Okay. So I made a little graphic to play a little game with y'all for the next news. Oh. Are you ready, Bruce? I'm hey, Bruce. Ready. Are you sure, Bruce? Okay, look at this graphic. So I have compiled a player A and a player B, and they are oh, both number one overall draft picks. Oh boy! I oh, want I you to tell me who the who the players are, and then we will go on with this with the news. But I just wanted to have a little fun stuff well, for you guys. So the other one's gonna here be the is one. the graphics for you guys. So oh, no. player A. 54% completion percentage. This is through the first two seasons of their career. He's got 12 interceptions, 2,796 yards passing, and a 37% win percentage. I mean, don't um, show touchdown. Player B, because I don't want it to give it away. Player B has 59% completion, 13 interceptions, 3,122 passing yards, and a 35% win percentage. Now, I would like to hear your thoughts on who you think player A and player B is. Um, first whoever all, wants to go first, you can you can have it. This can be a consensus first, thing. First, 
first overall picks in the first their first two seasons. Is one of them? Yes. Uh, is any of them active in the NFL right now? One of them is active. Yes. Yep. One of them is Jamarcus Russell. One of them is Bryce Young. Okay. Which one is no. which? MJ. If that is Bryce your guess. Young is on the left. Jamarcus uh, Russell is on the right. Sure, we'll go with that. Is that your final guess? Yes. So, Bryce Young is actually on the right, and Jamarcus ah. Russell is on the left. Dang but it. you I can see, you can see how similar their stats are. And this is going into my next question. We have Good seen shit, Jamarcus man, Russell cool. is. Did you, up? did you look that? Hold on. Did you look that shit up, MJ? No, I swear, I swear, I didn't. That's impressive. Like I knew Bryce Young, but not the other one. I was trying to. I was like, I was no So hindsight, hindsight is twenty twenty. We can say, look, Jamarcus Russell was a bust as a number one overall draft pick. The other one we're making excuses for and saying, okay, well, this guy is is better you know he it's he's just in a bad situation he who's he got to throw to let me let me let me stop you there all these espn analysts all these people i've been seeing saying bryce Young's situation is bad yeah it might have been bad last year but you bring in david dave canales at head coach almost said his full name we're not on we're not on that basis yet dave you bring in dave canales at head coach you bring you you bring in the offensive line the panthers brought in through through their free agency, they signed two good. They signed Robert Hunt. They got a they, 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 their O line isn't terrible, but you also bring in a wide receiver one from Pittsburgh, Deontay Johnson, and then you bring in uh, Xavier Leggett as a draft pick. He's got people to throw to. Adam Thielen had over a thousand yards last season. His situation got a lot better. Now it's not Caleb Williams' situation, which we will get in later, but Bryce Young's situation. I don't want that to be an excuse for him. Obviously, Carolina is not a good. And yes, he was a wide receiver. Go back, look up. Okay, look up 2023 Pittsburgh Steelers depth chart and tell me who was listed as wide receiver number one. I don't get on here and talk out my butt, Jack. I know what I'm talking about. Um, I got it written down right here. So he writes out his butt. He doesn't talk out of it. So Bryce Young is two and sixteen as a starter. And we've known that he is now benched for Andy Dalton. So let I want to hear your thoughts. Is Bryce Young a bust? Is he in a is he in a bad situation? I just tell me what you think about Bryce Young in Carolina. And um, you know, by the way, your, me, gra- your, gra- your, your graphics, graphics sucks. Wrong. <laughs> Put your graphic back up. Well, the graphics wrong? I used I used the pro stat thing. Uh oh. Well the pro stat. Put it, put it back down. You said he was two and sixteen as a starter. Yeah, that would be his win percentage. Twelve percent. Yeah, but it that's not calculating. It's not like calculating there. Um, let me look at what it said. It was doing. Hold up. I don't know what the exact like calculation for that. Can I answer the question? Right, right, you look that up. I'm gonna. But yeah, look, answer the question for me. The question that you presented was. Is Bryce Young a bust, or is it the circumstances that he's surrounded by? I'm gonna say both because the owner's absolute clown. The that whole team, like the Carolina Panthers, haven't been relevant since Jake Delhomme days, and uh, oh, okay, Cam Newton days. Look we'll at Cam Newton days. I'm sorry, my bad. Um, and it's it's not good. And to be honest with you, I don't. I never thought Bryce Young was very good. Um, and we're gonna be talking about it later, but. Uh, Ryan Poles absolutely uh, took his poll and owned the Panthers with that trade. That's all I got to say about that. It's both. It's both. He's not very good, and the Panthers organization is dog shit. Okay. <laughs> so, like, I see, I see both sides to this. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the thing that Bruce. Hates when I do. Oh, oh, he's playing on, play on the fence. Yeah, I'm riding this fence. So let's let's talk about it. I'm saying yeah, this is horrible for content, MJ. Wait, is it cedar? Is it cedar oak? What kind of what kind of fence is it? Birch. Cedar. It's birch. What up, David? How you doing? Uh, Cheers. What's up, David? David, gonna listen to me spit some facts. So here's the thing: there are two sides of the story. Is Bryce Young a bust? Probably. Is 
it very much possible that it is still a product of his situation. Yes. The reason being, and I know that this has been said, but I'll say it again. Look at what Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield have both been able to do after being horrible God, in you're Carolina. Taking fire, you're taking my fire from late for later. Get well said. Go ahead. Right. And who did Baker Mayfield have, though? Just to point that out. Who I'm Baker? sorry for inter- uh, interrupting. So, okay. So, who did no, Baker have? I, I, I will rip on your discussions. Xavier Leggett is very talented. He is one of the most raw wide receiver prospects I've ever seen in person. To claim that he has any impact or positive value on a basically still rookie quarterback who is struggling to find his way in the NFL is absolutely laughable. Adam Thielen is old and washed up. Adam Thielen cannot win routes against top corners in the NFL anymore. That is a fact. Deontay Johnson wasn't even the third best receiver on the Steelers last year. He may have been listed as their wide receiver one on the depth chart at the beginning of the year, but George Pickens laughed him out of Pittsburgh. Oh, they have no offensive talent. And Mike Tomlin said, bye-bye, go off to Carolina. You think that that is a wide receiver room that is worth Bryce Young actually being criticized? No. Now, has Bryce Young been horrible? Absolutely. And he even said it himself in his press conference today. If I would have played better in one more games, I wouldn't be in the situation. I think he's very aware of the fact that he has not played well. I think he's also very well aware of the fact that every respected analyst, front office member, former front office member, in the NFL community says this is the worst organization in since 2000 in the last 25 years. This is the worst run NFL organization period. And the Chicago bears exist. Oh, calm down there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to do that. But it really like it is David Tepper's right. That's yep. that's his name. David Tepper, he just run this organization into the ground. Keep in mind. He's the same guy that dumped a, a, a cocktail yeah. from his suite on a fan in the crowd. Yeah. Let's, let's keep that in mind. He's, he's this man traded him for he had a whole seg- MJ, well, you and I had a whole segment on him being an absolute ass clown. Yeah. So this is the guy who has traded away Christian McCaffrey, JJ Moore, Brian Burns, and more in order to get basically just Bryce Young. So when you mortgage that much of your future, it is almost impossible for it to pan out. Look at Trey Lance. Sometimes the situation is better than the player could ever be. Now there's also Alabama and a lot of SEC quarterbacks, Connor, do not pan out very well. Let's look at all those Alabama quarterbacks, Connor. You talk about the SEC and how great they no, are. No, no, I, I, I have been very vocal. Hold up. Go back, check the tape when we talked about Bryce Young before the draft. I've been there, very I'm vocal there, about how Alabama quarterbacks perform in the NFL. Go back and check the tape. Go back and check the tape because oh, it's I'm all aware. there. Go, it's all there. Like I, I, I know I've you were said that. Your victory lap the other day. What? You were trying to do your victory lap on Bryce Young the other day. What do you mean? Oh, in the group chat? Yeah. Yeah, because he's an so, Alabama quarterback, and it it's not that because he's Alabama, but a lot of stuff. I just didn't like him going in the NFL. He's small, but you can continue what you're saying. Oh, so it's almost like. Some some schools are better at, at, at offense and some schools are better at defense. So it's almost like just because you're in the SEC doesn't mean you're all of a sudden incredible. That's no, that is a very good I point. don't I don't think everybody in the SEC is an NFL prospect. I think the SEC's good in college. I haven't said anything about them playing in the NFL. That's two completely different. Fa- they like you, you're you're trying to compare apples and oranges. We're talking about college football and NFL, two completely different landscapes. And exactly. when they go to the NFL, I evaluate them differently. I like Jaden Daniels going to NFL, which is why he's although no rookie quarterback has been able to throw a touchdown, he's been the best one so far. I like C.J. Stroud going in the NFL. Although he didn't win the Heisman and Bryce Young did, he won Offensive Rookie of the Year, had one of the best rookie quarterback seasons to date, and threw for over 4,000 yards. Bryce Young didn't. And you can say, look, C.J. Stroud, oh, he went into a good situation. He did, but nobody was saying that before the draft. Hindsight's twenty twenty. We can say he was in a good situation because of what happened that year. 
I busted we out. could have said the same thing in Carolina if Carolina would have done good. We would have said the same thing in Chicago if Chicago would have done good with Justin Fields. I mean, it's wow. like hindsight's twenty twenty with everything. The Bears should have gotten an offensive line. We'll talk about that later. So if it's just hindsight is twenty twenty, why do we ever talk about anything? It's. I'm not saying that, but a, 2020. A, a, a lot of my stuff is proven because of hindsight. Me talking about C.J. Stroud, that was proven because of hindsight. People talking about his situation being good was proven because of hindsight. People talking about Bryce Young being a bust is proven because of hindsight. All this stuff is proven because of what we've seen. A year and two games in the season, for if we look at Jamarcus Russell, a whole year. He was out the NFL Ooh. in his third year. He was out the NFL in his third year. So, and, and I just showed you the stats. They were comparable. And I showed you that win percentage stat. They take into account, uh, take into account their wins and, like, their, their passes and stuff. So, it's not, like, pure win percentage. I probably should have expressed that. It's like a – it's a – it, they, they call it success. Yes. That is oh, their, yeah. that is their oh, thing. So yeah, – it's, it's success rate. That's yeah, like, it's like passes and and everything. So I got that messed up. I will, I will apologize. I I read it wrong. I should have put the passes anyway, in there too. But, MJ, stop um, getting stressed out. I see you getting stressed out. It's a bullshit stat. It's okay. Sometimes it's okay. Looking with the, it's okay with looking with the peepers. It's okay with looking with the peepers and understanding that it's MJ. You and I are both agreement uh, on this one, though, my guy. Um, yeah. I I actually do think the organizations. Uh, uh, obviously, super poorly run. We we talked about it earlier. Uh, he uh, what, what, shit months ago actually. It's just terrible. Uh, but he was also drafted into a situation which was absolutely brutal. Uh, I I just think his stature was just too small, and it was just um, I don't know. Could he be good? I don't know. Maybe in the future. I mean, we, MJ already alluded to it. Like we've seen with Sam Darnold and with the Vikings. Baker Mayfield, like, re completely reinventing his career with the Buccaneers. Back shoulder. Is that a catch? <laughs> Motherfucker. Um, but, yeah. So, that being said, I don't know. I, I completely agree with you. I think this is – it's, it's weird. We're, like, we're like, on, like, the same, like, track a lot lately. I'm like, you got to stop drinking alcohol. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that, Bruce, because that was actually my follow-up question. So, now that Tua is injured – there are talks that maybe the Dolphins are interested in bringing Bryce Young to their offense. Uh, right now they have uh, Skylar Thompson, I think, who isn't super, you know, he had that one playoff game against the Bills where the Bills like yeah, put up also have Ryan a whole Tan bunch of points. In their free agency, so yeah, I, but they if don't. I was, they don't if I was the Dolphins, I'd be going after Ryan Tannehill, in my opinion. They are but just- what, how do we feel about Bryce Young? And and this is a really uh, slight change, but it's Ryan been in the conversation. I just answered that question with me saying that. I'm going after Ryan Tannehill. Do you know why I'm going after Ryan Tannehill? Because I know for a fact that that's a safe – he shakes his head no. I know for a fact that that's a safe person to go after. He's but, safe. He is a game manager, and I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to worry about developing a quarterback because right now the Dolphins are in a situation where they don't have the time frame to just develop a guy. At all, so right now they can win, win now by having a serviceable court. That's hilarious. A serviceable quarterback at that position, if Tua ends up coming back. So that being said, I'm going after Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill has none of the skills Agreed. that matter for a Miami offense. I so it makes zero 100%. sense. Hundred percent disagree. He can sit in the pocket and throw. That's what you need right now. That's, not, that's not their offense. That's that's not the Dolphins' offense. Sorry, hold on. I got a text message. Very important guy over there. Um, well, yeah, when you have a, a, a daughter. Um, I don't think uh, I don't think Malik Willis fits the – the, the offense that the Packers are running with Jordan Love. I don't at all. But guess what? They ended up with uh, – uh, because of the coaching and because of how good LaFleur is as a coach, he was able to put Malik Willis in the best optimal position to win a football game. And I think he actually was a smart – like he played well. 
So I don't know. I, I think that like you find you you put you find the best player at that position and you and you put him and your team in the best place for success. And I think Ryan Tannehill, in my opinion, is that. Is he a statue? Okay. All right. I'll I'll give you credit. He is a statue. Why, but, why not Joe Flacco? Okay, fair. Okay, fair. Good call. Actually, I thought Flacco was uh, on a roster already, though. He is. He's on the Colts. He might be, yeah. yeah but it's not that hard to trade for a backup. Yeah, but Bruce, is, this would be the the situation where they would have to spend the least – Amount yeah. like yeah. signing Ryan Tannehill. It would, it would how take much is that going to cost? Them? It would take a seventh round pick to get Joe Flacco off the Colts. Sure, but why use a seventh round pick when you can go take somebody off the couch like the Browns did last season? Right, you may catch lightning in a bottle with them. You never. Know. You got that's a good take, Bruce. I completely agree with you with the Packers. Everything like that's a great take. I. I I couldn't. I couldn't say. Well, okay, but like, relax. Like, I'm, I mean, I, I, I get. I, thank, the, well, thank you. But like, I actually. But I do think that like Lafleur is an amazing coach. Just that, as I think that, um, God, Mick, Mick, uh, Daniel. Thank you, Mick, I think he's a great coach too, and I think he'd be able to adjust it to a, a veteran quarterback that knows how to how to run any offense in the NFL because he's been a part of. He's seen it all. He's he's at that point in his career where he's seen it all. And MJ, you are hundred percent correct. They they are different types of quarterbacks. Like, but again, I think that they would be able to adjust. That's it. I mean, shit. All you gotta do is throw a ball fucking like fifty yards to to Hill and be like, hey, go get it. Or Waddle, give me that slant twenty five yards or post twenty five yards. Boom. So there's there's like three problems with that. Number one. Ryan Tannehill can't even get a backup job in the NFL right now. Okay. That's that's number one. Number two, he doesn't have the arm strength. What? Neither could Flacco last year. Neither could Flacco. Correct. And I still say that Joe Flacco didn't do Jack. It was the Browns defense that did it. Flacco barely did anything. No, that's not and, that's and not number, wrong. And number I mean, three. I mean, I'm with him on that, actually. And number three. I actually really barely give – well, okay, three is a two-parter. I barely give Malik Willis really any credit for the Packers' win. It was much more their defense that put them in the position where they could run the ball like they did. If their defense didn't perform like they did, that game plan would not have worked and Malik Willis would have gotten shell-shocked. Um, and the other part of that is the Packers and Dolphins do not run anywhere near – no, I agree with that. Uh, I, I was, I was, I was more or less saying about the the coaching. That, that wasn't, it wasn't the Fair, offense. I honestly, I have seen Mike McDaniel's make some very poor scheme decisions in his time. Like the scheme that he ran out there against Kansas City in that playoff game last year was horrible. Mm-hmm. Like when he gets out of his element, yeah, and but his he's also putting bombs team. to Tyreek Hill. I don't know. I don't know if you can you can compare Andy Reid to anybody. That's a Hall of Fame coach against Mike McDaniel. Miami. I'm not. I'm not comparing who they were playing against. I'm comparing when Mike McDaniel gets out of his element. So with that was the comparison, you, you, this is the comparison you just used, though. I wasn't saying it was because of who they were playing. I wasn't saying it was because of Andy Reid. Andy Reid is the offensive coach. Andy Reid has nothing to do with the game plan Mike McDaniel's trots out on offense. I'm, I got confused. All right, go ahead. It's like you said, the chief. When Mike McDaniel's, okay, you, you're you're taking it too literally. You're missing the point. I'm saying when Mike McDaniel's has to change his game plan. Sorry, I know you saw that. At all, he does a horrible job. When he has to go off script, it goes very poorly. So I agree I'm, with that. I agree with that. I agree that with that. Somebody under center who is not Tua would not go well in Miami. I don't care who it is. So, I don't think. Why, okay, so. Okay. So my counterpoint to that, though, is is if you have a coach who go, can't make play calls very well off of script, why wouldn't you want to bring in a veteran quarterback to help settle things down and be able to control a coach potentially that doesn't do very well with that and be able to settle uh, all the other players down? Because I'll be honest with you, I, I as a coach, I would love to have that opportunity to be like, okay, you know what, I fucked up, like, Thank you for like doing a good job. And there were times where you, you I, I should, I'll use you as an example. I may have called something, be like, like throwing a pitch, and you're like, mm, you know what? <laughs> no. <laughs> and 
and you did a great job because you adjusted. You were smart enough to know, like, you know what? In this situation, I feel like this is the best for me. So it could be the same type of thing. If you get a veteran quarterback in there that's able to have competent, and, that, and that's the key thing, though, competent grasp of the offense, I think that, like, it'd be a, a good a good find for, for Miami. I I, I you I mean, it'll stay away from Tannehill being a, a, a good addition to Miami if if they decide to end up going that route. I, I've got one more, just one question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. When did we start glazing 36-year-old Ryan Tannehill like this? Um, I don't know. It was it was Connor's question. He, no, <laughs> he's he's not he was never he's, he's Kyle Orton, bro. He's Kyle Orton. But like, he's kind of like, like compare him and compare his stats with Kyle Orton's stats. And to be honest with you, I'll probably take Kyle Orton over him. I don't think he's anything special. He's not. <laughs> I just, I, I don't disagree. No, he's not anything special. But I do think that he's like he's just capable. I don't think he is capable anymore. Fair. But anyway, okay, he'd that's fair too. Well, he'd have a job, right? You know who's capable. RG3 got fired from ESP and he needs a job. Oh <laughs> what are we doing? 